Hey everybody, this is Pastor Phil. I am so thankful that you're taking the time to listen to this message. And I say that very specifically because I know there's a lot of people that are are really going after your time. And because of the restrictions and constraints and the challenges that we face today, this technology piece has become a big part of our lives, both a blessing and a curse because we're probably getting fatigued at looking at a phone or a laptop screen or even a smart television. So I know, but you taking the time to watch today is a big deal and I I thank you from the depths of my heart. I wanna connect my heart to yours. And I'm I'm sharing a message with you to, to reach out through these lenses that trusting the Holy Spirit, he would connect with you, that you would hear the encouragement that I wanna share, that you would grab a hold of some inspiration and, and maybe even do some, some evaluation of your life and how you're, how you're holding things together and where your focus is. Because now more than ever, there are competing voices and opinions that want our attention. And it can just plumb wear us out. There has been many of opportunities and plenty of, of uh, chances where I could be offended or mad. I'm sure you have too. There are people that I think just want to make you mad. There are political strategies and pulling us both directions. There's people's fear and there's people's faith. And sometimes fear is used uh, you know, to try to intimidate us. And sometimes faith, if we're honest, even among the church is being used to try to intimidate others. And I want to try to pierce through all of that. Right now, we are working in an area that nobody could prepare for. I went through Bible school and seminary, and there was not a single class on how to lead a church through a pandemic. And so I'm relying heavily on counsel. I'm relying heavily on the Holy Spirit of God to stay sensitive, to stay in tune, to stay encouraged. And I want to talk to the folks that are still absolutely part of believers and and are walking this journey out, observing, listening, uh, taking precautions, uh, following your own level of confidence and peace as it pertains to coming back to the, the local gathering. I I genuinely mean this, that we honor you and we want to serve you the very best that we can. And one of the ways that we're doing that is making our broadcast when we were doing it simply online only, a live event or something that we would broadcast on Sunday. And if you've tried to see some of our Facebook live attempts, they didn't go that great. And we we finally decided after five or six weeks of attempts that we were just gonna pull the plug on it because we kept running into issues, number one. Number two, the quality that we were able to put out there really wasn't consistent with what we wanted to do. So we've been going back to recording with our, our uh, the high level quality and putting that out on Monday mornings or by midday Monday so that you can participate. I wanna to talk to you though about this challenge that I know you have because I have it we all have it that we need to engage ourselves we've been out of gathering since March and there are uh, you know those of us that were faithful to to watch online to be engaged and to receive the message and stay connected to the church and I think in time, because we're, we're feeling lens fatigued, we're feeling computer and phone fatigued, that it can feel more like a chore uh, to watch even church. I want to encourage you parents that we, we really need to fight to feed our minds, to stir our souls and allow the Spirit of God to, to encourage us because we're, we're, we're quite literally facing conflict every single day. And if we're not careful, we will be pouring out or something will be pulling out. And without replacing that, without replenishing, we will find ourselves spiritually getting really dry. And now more than ever, we need to be resourcing the scriptures. We need to be resourcing the spirit of the Lord. And we need to stay connected to the local church. I I want to appeal to you that parents, I've I've discovered this about my parenting, my children, this this is a human thing, that kids don't listen to what you say. Our children listen, I'm saying that on purpose, our children listen to what we do. And we need our children to be protected as well. We need our children to watch us model how we stay connected to the body of Christ. So I want to uh, say that whether it's a Sunday morning or a Monday, uh, I was really stirred up, encouraged by the Nye family. They, uh, they kind of follow a similar protocol that Becky and I do. Each week, I ask my children, what was your primary takeaway or your nugget from this weekend's message? 
Well, I discovered that they were requiring their children to watch the message and jot down or take a note of a nugget and then share it with them. And then just a couple of weeks ago, they shared their nuggets with me and I loved it. What a great idea. That keeps them engaged, the children. It keeps the parents engaged, which is our primary role to develop the faith in our children and keeping all of us together as the household of faith. I read a, a question, I can't remember exactly where I saw it, but the, the question was a little bit pointed and I hesitated at first to, to throw it out there, but I'm just going to do it because you know my heart, I pray, that this is just a good question that we should ask ourselves and here, here's what it was. The question was asking church members, uh, I don't know what church it was, but the, the question was this, if everybody supported the church at the same level that you do, would the church survive after the pandemic? Ouch or amen. Because the truth is, there is a practical piece to this. There's a spiritual part that we get, but we're not just consumers, are we? Consumers think in ways of, like, visiting a restaurant. I, I wouldn't give anything if I didn't get something. That's consumer thinking. But we here are called by God, here in this community, to serve, to, to continue to exist, to advance and grow. And so I want to I want to remind you that how we participate even when we're not present makes a lasting and eternal difference. I also want to remind you that money is spiritual. And that's going to get some people to grimace, I know, but let me explain. Money is spiritual. Before I before I even go into scripture or go into any of this, I'm not saying that because we're in some type of financial trouble. I'm pleased to tell you, I'm humbled to tell you, I'm delighted to tell you that our church is financially strong. Our balance sheet is great. We continue to see money and donations coming in that are supporting the building program. I mean, that's going every week and tens of thousands of dollars of checks are being written to keep that moving forward. We're on target to be in our new building by September, even in the midst of this crazy stuff. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you, church. We continue to fund a food pantry through all of this. So I'm not saying one piece of this with a hidden motive or some type of scandalous view to say, if you don't do something now, church, we're going to go under. I'm not saying that. I'm sharing this out of pure conviction. It's, it's my responsibility as a pastor to be thinking about, praying about your spiritual strength, your spiritual longevity. And money has a strong part to play Money is spiritual. I, I want to read to you a verse. I don't mean to just grab it out of mid-chapter, but it's found in Matthew chapter 6, verse number 21. And the verse simply goes like this. For your heart will always pursue what you value as your treasure. Your heart, your mind, your attention, your soul will pursue whatever it is that you value. That's why God is really concerned about what we worship. Because he knows that we become like what we worship. It's where we give our time, our talent, and our treasure. It's spiritual. Now you might be thinking, well, Pastor Phil, look, we got plenty of money. Things are good. We're prospering. Praise God. I, I'm grateful for that. I, I, can, I can say the same thing. Thank you, Jesus, for supplying. But I've also determined and discovered about myself, and if you're honest, I think you'll say that you've discovered it as well. When you begin to drift your attention and your focus, your treasure in Jesus, it begins to affect all the peripheral things. In fact, when we let that flame go out, it begins to show up in how we respond to our children. We may not have the patience that we once did. We may not have the knee-jerk responses to walk them through conflict to have the answers that are uplifting and pointing to Jesus when they're faced with the same questions that we adults are and the challenges that we face. How we respond to our spouses, how we navigate our homes, our businesses, how, how we begin to interact with people that we work with and strangers that we don't even know. You see, I've discovered that when I keep myself committed, connected with my finances, it's continually putting my focus back on Him because I have something there that cost me. There's an Old Testament example of this. It's, it's found in 2 Samuel 24. And it's, it's, it's lengthy, so allow me to paraphrase. And you should go back and, and read the entire account for yourself. Just number one, to make sure I'm telling it right. And number two, it's just a good account to look at. Well, David was in, in a bad spot, King David. 
and there was a plague on the land. And the Lord brought a prophet by the name of Gad and talked to him about what he needed to do in order to get this plague to be lifted. And he, he told King David that you need to go to this landowner and, and to purchase this piece of property so he could build an altar and give an offering, a sacrifice unto the Lord. And so King David, unannounced, shows up at this man's property. The man seeing the king hits the dirt, bows his head, you know, responds to King David as majesty and the king. And he says, what, what on earth brings you to my house, my property? And King David said, I'm, I'm here to build an altar and to offer a sacrifice unto the Lord. Now, their conversation doesn't indicate in Scripture that this man knew that there was a plague or that by David's um, internal issues, it actually got brought on God's people. But his response was, King, you can have the land. King, you can not only have the land, I'm going to give you my oxen that you might sacrifice unto the Lord that he would receive it for you. And King David's response is the key piece that I want to point out to you. David, David responded by rejecting that. He said to the man, essentially, I appreciate your offer, but I will not offer a sacrifice unto the Lord of something that didn't cost me something. I think that's powerful. I'm so grateful, as I'm sure you are, for God's grace. His grace is unending. His mercies are new every morning. But I don't want to get into a place where I slip into, well, it's all under grace. Oh, well, God understands. I don't want God to be the one that always has to take that statement from me. I want to respond to God's grace, God's goodness, God's provision, what God is doing through the local church, what God has done for me in the past, and I'm going to stay connected. I don't, I don't want to give something unto God that didn't cost me something. And so I want to encourage you. I understand if you still have um, precautions or trepidation about being in the body collectively or in the building. And, and, and we are doing the very best we can to reach out to you personally, uh, to bring a message. I mean, I still am seeking God to speak to me and to show me what to share our church. This means that it's a word from God for us. Please make sure that you're availing yourself to these messages. Please make sure, parents, that you're encouraging your children around these messages, even if it's age inappropriate for them to watch or listen. And I don't mean that, that I'm going to say anything that would be shocking, but maybe it's just outside of their understanding. You could regurgitate in such a way that the timeless truths that need to be communicated could be brought down or made palatable right now, especially while we don't have in-building children's ministry happening. Our youth need this. Our youth need our parents to model this. Remember, our kids don't do what we say. Our children do what we do. And so they repeat. They will demonstrate. Uh, look, we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. And I've definitely not modeled perfectly. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it's if we see ourselves off track, I don't want to continue to go off track. I want to make an adjustment. An adjustment is simply repentance, changing my mind, changing my focus, and adjusting. And then I want to also encourage you around that question. If everybody supported the church at the same level that you did, would believers still be here when the pandemic is done? Now, of course, by faith, we know that God's got our back and he's providing. Like I said, we're, we're doing great. Thank you, Jesus, for it. It's not just about that. It's about keeping our treasure where it needs to be. And one of the most primary ways we do that is through an offering. Now, we don't live in the era where we bring animals any longer. Uh, or we burn sacrifices, which I'm grateful for that. And offerings do something very significant for us. They keep us anchored. They keep us grounded in our attention on Him. So church, as we continue to move forward in the weeks or months to come, none of us know exactly what's going to happen. None of us know exactly what uh, it looks like a lot of month to month, let alone week to week. But we do know the one who holds all things together. And Jesus has not gotten off the throne. Jesus is still leading his church. And the Holy Spirit is still empowering you. And he's empowering me to be a bright, shining light in the midst of darkness. May we be honed in and disciplined through this season to hear from God, to study the scriptures, to guard our hearts and minds. 
with the promises of God. They've not been changed. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This didn't catch him off guard. It might have caught us off guard, but it didn't catch him off guard. And he's got you. He's got me. He's got this church, and he wants to use us. So let me pray before we check off. Thank you again for staying with me through this process, through this video. Lord, right now, across every screen and every person that's watching this video, I thank you for illuminating our hearts to bringing peace to the chaos. It's one thing to have chaos out here, but God, we thank you that there's a peace of God in here that guards our hearts and minds. Right now, I declare over every household your safety, your protection, your healing power, your provision. God, thank you for strengthening marriages. God, thank you for the anointing to father and to mother and to lead in such an uncertain time. We know that our foundation is you. And though the storms come because we're planted on the rock, not on the sand, we will remain. And not only will we remain, we are going to demonstrate God's provision, blessing, and favor to all who are observing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love you, church. I look forward to seeing each one of you as soon as possible. Please stay connected online and through YouTube and our website. And thank you for your continued faithfulness. Have a great day. I call you blessed. We'll talk to you soon.